Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. Since May this year, there has been a surge of severe murders and major violent incidents in various parts of China, leaving many people shocked. They can't help but ask, why has Chinese society turned this way, and where is it headed next? Today, let's explore this issue. First, let's list some of the exposed major violent incidents. On May 1st, a family of three, including the village head, was brutally killed in Xishe village, Dingxiang County, Shanxi province. It was rumored that the perpetrator had been wrongfully imprisoned by the village head and sought revenge upon release, resulting in the murder of the entire family. On May 7th, in Zhehezai village, Puyang County, Henan province, a murder case occurred due to a neighborhood dispute, leading to two deaths and four injuries. Another incident on May 7th took place in Nanping, Fujian province, involving a shooting and several injuries. There was it was reported that the suspect is a 50-year-old male, and the police are offering 50,000 yuan for clues that can lead to his arrest. It was said that the incident occurred during a forced demolition of a pig farm by agriculture police officers, where the livelihood owner used a shotgun to injure several government workers before fleeing with the firearm. On May 8th, a throat slashing incident among students unfolded at Jilin Electronic Information Vocational Technology College in Jilin province. The incident stemmed from a conflict over seating arrangements in the classroom. From the video footage, it is evident that one victim has already died. On the same day, a knife attack occurred in Jiashan Tang, Chengde City, Hebei Province. Local surveillance captured a video of a man repeatedly stamping two individuals suspected to have resulted in at least two deaths. The third fatal incident of the day took place in Fujian province. In Jiaochen district, Ningde city, a clinic on Ximen Road witnessed a knife attack resulting in the deaths of a doctor in his 60s and his son in his 40s. On May 10th, in Changqin District, Jinan City, Shandong Province, an English teacher surnamed Jia killed Liu Jijie, the secretary of the Communist Party branch and the director of the village committee of Xili Village in Wenchang Street. Liu's wife and their 15-year-old son were also killed. After that, the teacher Jia also killed himself. According to reports, Liu Jijie's son frequently bullied Jia's daughter at school, causing her to suffer from mental instability due to the harassment. Jia had complained to Liu Jijie multiple times, but he ignored the situation, leading to the enraged Jia to commit the murders. On the evening of May 11th, a video circulated online depicting a stumbling incident in Jiujie and Chongqing city, showing at least one fatality and blood staining the ground. The suspect surrendered to the police at the scene. On the same day, a murder occurred in Qichuan Town, Donggang city in Liaoning province. A, a pig butcher killed several relatives of the village head and other villagers due to a land dispute. The authorities didn't report this case. The latest rumors indicate that 11 people have died, with one person still under rescue. On the evening of May 12th, a home site took place in a residential area of Baoyin County in Yangzhou City, Jiangsu Province, where a 90-year-old man killed his spouse in her 80s after an argument. On May 13th, in Menchen, 
In Goldman Chan village, Xin County, Shanxi Province, a man killed someone due to a love dispute, then drove his car to hit pedestrians. Reports suggest there were at least seven deaths and 11 injuries, with some claiming it caused the deaths of 17 pedestrians, including a police officer. On the same day, there were online reports of a fatal knife attack near Luihai Market in Wuxi County, Chongqing City, with rumors of two deaths and one injury. The official response the next day stated one death and two injuries. On the evening of May 14th, multiple videos circulated online showing a man welding long scissors and attacking people in Yunyan District, Guiyang City, Guizhou Province. It was rumored that at least five people were stamped and there were fatalities. However, officials later claimed that no deaths occurred. On May 14th and 15th, a high school student at Tongzhou campus of the high school affiliated to Renmin University in China harmed multiple individuals on two consecutive days. Later, officials reported that on the night of the 14th, the student killed two laborers and injured his own mother. The following day at school, the student injured one classmate and two teachers, one of whom was the vice principal. In total, there were two deaths and four injuries. On the evening of May 16th, a man in Wuzhou City, Guangxi province, attacked people on the street and held a hostage with a knife, resulting in two deaths and two injuries, according to official reports. And then on May 24th, while two teenagers were live streaming in Xiamen City, someone suddenly approached them from behind and attacked. Both victims suffered injuries to their hands and backs. There were rumors that rumors circulating online that one victim's hand was completely severed. Later, the police confirmed that the incident stemmed from an online dispute between the parties involved, and the perpetrators specifically traveled from another city to carry out the attack at the live streaming site. The incident garnered significant attention in society because the whole process was live streamed. On the same day, a netizen posted a video claiming that a student fight a student fight at Wusheng Middle School in Guang'an City, Sichuan Province, resulted in the death of one student. So in just over 20 days, there have been rumors, there have been numerous fatal incidents with over 40 deaths and a total of more than 70 casualties. Among them are several cases of random killings and family annihilations. Incidents of villagers killing village officials have also occurred multiple times this year. For example, on April 6th, a villager in Penshui County, Chongqing City, killed four people, including the village leader, the leader's wife, his brother, and the resident cutter. On March 27th, a fatal incident took place in Xiuyu District, Putian City, Fujian Province, where a man was attacked with a knife, resulting in two deaths and one injury. On January 19th, in Pingyang County, Zhejiang Province, a 42-year-old man named Yang committed a knife attack due to a land dispute, resulting in the deaths of six village officials and their family members. These are only the cases that have been exposed on the internet. Due to internet censorship in China, media outlets generally do not report such so-called negative news. So these incidents represent an in incomplete picture. These pieces of news have shocked many people, promoting them to ask, 
what has happened to society? Why is there so much hosti hostility everywhere? Some citizens commented that this is because in China, the ruling Communist Party exercises totalitarian control where officials are above the law and ordinary people have nowhere to voice their complaints. They live joyless lives and have no fear of death. Furthermore, the Communist Party advocates atheism and from its inception, it has proclaimed the need to violently destroy all existing systems, violently seize power and use violence to promote social development. To incite violence, they must cult 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 cultivate and stimulate hatred, injecting it into people's hearts and arousing evil within human beings. Chinese people have witnessed the tyranny and cruelty of the communist regime, naturally developing a blind belief in violence, with their thoughts and actions filled with aggression and hostility. Moreover, hating enemies such as hating Japan or the United States has also been promoted and glorified by the CCP as a legitimate and even heroic sentiment. Therefore, since hatred has become a dominant emotion for many Chinese people, when there is no one to hate among the Japanese or Americans at a given time, it is only natural for this hatred to be directed toward fellow citizens. So the above is discussed from an ideological and a psychological perspective. From a societal perspective, after decades of economic development, development, Chinese society has entered another turning point, another cycle and a peak stage of intensified social conflicts. In addition to homicide cases, there are also increasing incidents of suicide, particularly collective suicides among young people. We have previously reported on at least two such cases. This reflects two characteristics of Chinese society at present. The first is the oppressive social atmosphere brought about by the solidification of social classes. Young people due to blocked upward mobility find it extremely difficult to achieve their dreams through their own efforts, no matter how hard they work. If they are not born into privileged families or lack influential social connections, it is challenging for them to succeed. Moreover, various forms of class and regional discrimination and significant pressure on young people, and some can even find employment. The officially acknowledged youth unemployment rate has already exceeded 20%. Previously, Internal meeting data from Shanghai Ocean University circulated online indicating that the unemployment rate among college graduates is as high as 70 to 80 percent. The second is the overall economic decline. When significant instability occurs in Chinese society, it is often related to economic downturns. The rapidly widening wealth gap further exacerbates social contradictions. The severity of the wealth disparity in China is now unknown to the outside world. In 2008, China's Gini coefficient reached 0.491, the highest level globally. But the CCP stopped disclosing the numbers afterward. The official statements claim that China's Gini coefficient has been decreasing year by year, reflecting, reflecting the effectiveness of social governance and the achievements of common prosperity. However, not many people believe such claims. 
taking bank deposits as an example. According to data from China Merchant Bank in Shenzhen, about 3% of individual accounts account for about 90% of the total deposit amount. Recently, there was a long online rumor about a deposit slip amounting to 300 billion Chinese yuan or 42.55 billion US dollars. The money was deposited in the Agricultural Bank of China's Hong Kong branch under the name of a woman named Zheng Weiqian. People were surprised by the magnitude of this deposit and curious about who could be so wealthy. There are rumors that Zheng Weiqian is the first wife of Wang Jun, the eldest son of one of the elders of the eight founding members of the Communist Party, Wang Zhen. Wang Jun has been referred to as, by some media as China's wealthiest second generation red. Of course, these claims cannot be verified at present. However, within the CCP's own reports, there are often news articles about corrupt officials embezzling billions of tens of billions. These are just unfortunate officials who had been caught. So it's probably not unimaginable that the families of current officials who have not been investigated possess hundreds of billions of Chinese yuan. Additionally, China's household registration system renders all rural residents without urban hukou or household registration as second-class citizens from birth. They face discrimination in various aspects and find it difficult to escape the status of forever being second-class citizens in their own country or to have a decent life. Xi Jinping has launched policies such as the so-called Comprehensive Well of Society and the Poverty Eradication, but he has never addressed the true structural problems in the social system that cause poverty. A resident with a rural hukou may forever remain poor. Looking at the cases we have listed today, many of them occur in rural areas and areas where urban and rural areas converge. These places are the boundaries between poverty and affluence. The poor can see the wealth but can never attain it. Their anger manifests in the form of criminal cases. Some people say that during the famines that caused tens of millions of deaths in China in the last century, the Chinese people did not rebel, so there won't be any problems in China now. However, we must recognize that the current social situation is significantly different from that time. Before the CCP took power from 1970, 37 to 1949, China experienced 12 years of different wars, causing the economy to collapse completely. The people's concern was not development, but fear, fear of the violence of war and fear of starving to death. In the early stages of the CCP's rule, they successfully implemented brainwashing propaganda among the population. People were eager and yearning for the CCP to lead them into a world of equality and abundant material resources. People also cherished the newly attained peace, so many did not lose confidence in the CCP government, and many may not have known how many people have already died of starvation. But the situation is completely different now. The past 40 years have been referred to as the 40 years of development, where the dominant emotions among the Chinese people were the desire for development and the fear of survival itself has long been forgotten. Chinese people who have enjoyed the so-called good times will not be able to survive for a year by just eating grass, as claimed by Wang Qishan, former vice chairman of China. 
therefore becoming poor will become a tremendous driving force for taking risks and venting dissatisfaction dissatisfaction. If continued so social injustice is added to the mix, various forms of violent resistance will emerge endlessly. What's more important is that the power at the grassroots level of Chinese society is gradually becoming ineffective. Officials inaction has also occur, resulted in a loss of motivation to maintain social order. The recent spread of violence may even be a consequence of the negligence of grassroots governments and officials. This is a rather dangerous situation. Once the high authorities in Beijing declines, the grassroots of the CCP may, may deteriorate at a very fast speed, leading to the collapse of the entire society. Due to the lack of democratic elections, the CCP has always lacked legitimacy in its governance. After the bankruptcy and failure of communist ideology, the CCP relied on so-called giving the Chinese people a good life in exchange for their support in its governance. Now that speed, rapid development is no longer the case, various contradictions and problems are immediately surfacing. Previously, the Chinese often mocked Japan for its slow economic development and losing 30 years. Judging from the current frequency, frequent occurrence of heinous crimes in Chinese society, China probably no longer has the qualification to mock Japan because such a society filled with resentment may not withstand 30 years of slow development before completely collapsing. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please double check if you are still subscribed to my channel as YouTube keeps taking off my subscribers. And if you like my content, please spread my channel and videos or go to my website at jenniferzenblog.com, jenniferzenblog.com. Sign up for a membership or make a donation to support my effort. Thank you. See you next time.